make an atonement for us. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 35 and verse 33. So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood defiles the land, and no atonement can be made for the land, for the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore do not defile the land which you inhabit, in the midst of which I dwell. For I, Yahweh, dwell among the children of Israel. So what did they do? Our Lord told them, don't pollute the land that you dwell, for blood defiles the land. So when they shed our blood, they defiled this land called America. So no atonement can be made for the blood that they shed on this land, except for the blood of him who shed our blood. Who shed our blood? The so-called white man. So they have to be enslaved and then slaughtered in order to make atonement for the things that they've done. And now I'm going to get into that. Let me get a couple more scriptures going into forgiveness of sins for the nation of Israel. Now this is the book of John chapter 4 and verse 22. John chapter 4 and verse 22. And this is Yahawashai speaking to a heathen woman. So Yahawashai had asked the woman to draw him water. And there was a conversation that took place. And then later on, Yahawashai ended up letting her know, um, ended up letting her know through, through parables that he was the Messiah, that he was the Savior. Verse 22 of John chapter 4, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is for the Jews. And who were the Jews? That word Jew goes into the word Judah. So during the time of King Solomon and King David, the kingdom of Israel, the nation of Israel was split into two kingdoms. There was the southern kingdom and that was the kingdom of Judah. And then there was the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom was the kingdom of Israel. They were the same people, but they were split up because that was the Lord. That was one of the Lord's prophecies because of King Solomon. King Solomon transgressed against the Lord and started to worship idols. So our Lord stripped the kingdom from him. So when our Lord said, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is for the Jews. That salvation was not speaking of, of something that's a common thing. That salvation was speaking of rest, being saved. And it being for the Jews meant for the Israelites. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. So we don't worship the Lord in our flesh. We don't worship the Lord by doing things that please our flesh. We worship the Lord by doing things that please our spirit, by doing things that please the Heavenly Father who created us, who is the Father of spirits. Yahweh is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So you can't claim that you love the Lord but yet you're doing everything that the Lord is displeased with. The Lord tells us not to eat unclean animals, not to eat pork, not to eat shrimp, not to eat lobster. The Lord tells us not to eat those animals. So you can't eat those animals, but then claim that you love the Lord. That would make you a hypocrite because the Lord tells us in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 15. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, now I'm going to go to Leviticus, and this is simply one example. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, I'm going to start at the top, food permitted and forbidden. So this is the, Leviticus chapter 11 is the Lord going through clean and unclean food that we're not supposed to eat. And it also, it's also brought up again in Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 3. Clean and unclean meat. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 3. You shall not eat any detestable thing. These are the animals which you may eat. 
the ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roe, the roe deer, the wild goat, the mountain goat, the antelope, the mountain sheep. And you may eat every animal with cloven hooves, having hooves split into two parts, and that chew the cud among the animals. Nevertheless, of those that chew the cud or have cloven hooves, you shall not eat, such as these, the camel, the hare, and the rocks, hyrax. For they chew the cud and do not have cloven hooves. They are unclean for you. Also the swine is unclean for you, because it has cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud. You shall not eat their flesh, nor touch their dead carcasses. So we're not supposed to eat pigs. These you may eat of all that are in the water. You may eat all that have fins and scales. So we're only supposed to eat fish that have fins and scales. We're only supposed to eat animals in the waters that have fins and scales. So if an animal does not have fins or scales, we're not supposed to eat it. That includes the catfish and any other fish that doesn't have scales. That includes crab, lobster, shrimp, horse, horse, uh... In, in any other animal. But back to Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Any, an, any other animal that swims in the water. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine that would divides the hoof, having cloven, ho cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud, is unclean for you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean for you. So we're not supposed to touch any pigs that are dead, and we're not supposed to eat their dead carcasses. So when you got a Christian claiming that the Lord died for our sins and he made every animal clean, they're lying to you. Because I got the account that spoke about when Peter seen a list and it had clean and unclean beast. It had unclean beast on it. But the Lord was using that list to tell Peter, look, some of the men have taken on the ways of the heathen. So they began to live like beasts. That doesn't mean that they're not Israelites. You're still, you still talk to them and bring them back to the fold, bring them back to who they were. So in the book of Acts, when Peter was, was presented with the list of, of unclean animals, that was speaking of men, not actual animals. But people will use that scripture and twist it in order to justify what they eat. And it causes a lot of people to stumble at the law. Y'all forgive me if I'm, if I'm speaking in a rude manner, but it's, it, I'm, I'm not being aggressive. I'm just speaking. So our Lord says in John chapter 14 and verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we show that we love the Lord by keeping his commandments and living by faith. So we have faith that our Lord Yahweh is going to redeem us from this earth, which is why we constantly do things that please the Lord. Now I'm going to go to Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 21, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 21, Israel is not forgotten. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions. And like a cloud, your sins return to me, for I have redeemed you. So the Lord blotted out our sins and our transgressions so that we can return to him and not have a guilty conscience. So that we can serve the Lord and not have a guilty conscience. So that we can ask the Lord for forgiveness for things that we do when we stumble or when, when the spirit comes on us to ask for forgiveness of former sins. Because some of us brothers have been brought through a uh, 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 walks of life that our Lord brought us through. And, and he showed his mercy on us being this truth in order that he may show his mercy. So our Lord blotted out the sins and transgressions of Israel.
Now I'm going to get the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. And verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 12. It reads, Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return backsliding Israel. Return to, says Shalakia. Return backsliding Israel, says Yahweh. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says Yahweh. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity. Ask the Lord for forgiveness for the things that you've done. That you have transgressed against Yahweh, your power. That you have scattered your charms, being whatever the Lord blessed you with, you scattered them. To alien deities under every green tree. To alien powers, all these other gods under every green tree. Being under every family, under every nation. And you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. So you have not obeyed the voice that spoke to Moses and gave Moses the law, statutes, and commandments. Or the voice that spoke to the prophets and gave Isaiah and Jeremiah all these prophecies. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord. For I am married to you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart. Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which is what the Lord is doing in the times that we're in now. So the Lord tells us that he's married to us. And I'm getting ready to wrap it up. Now I'm going to, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be going into the book of the Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Now I'm going to be going to Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you, which is these other nations. Our Lord sent the other nations against us to punish us because we had went off. So when you're not obedient to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, that leaves you in a weaker state because now you don't have a defense. Now you're not pleasing the Lord. So now He's not going to protect you if you don't do things that please Him. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. So being returned to the Lord, now we're doing things that please the Lord. So now He keeps that hedge of angels around us. He keeps that protection around us so that we can continue to do things that please Him and nobody else can hurt us. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your power. So what is the name of the Lord? Our power, the power of the Hebrews, Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am Yahweh, your power, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. So the Lord is very possessive over his people. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3 and verse 16. The Lord will also roar from Zion, being the city of King David. The Lord will also roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, which is the nation of Israel. Jerusalem is where the Israelites dwell, but it's a people before it's a place. So the Lord made that land for the Israelites to come to, to inhabit. But the people that were dwelling there were Israelites. They are Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem and Israel. The heavens and earth will shake 
but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am Yahweh, your power, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy and no aliens shall ever pass through her again. So we're not going to have no so-called white man coming and having children with our with our women. We're not going to have no 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 Arabs taking our women and, and making children with our women once our Lord returns. That's those aliens. Our Lord isn't going to let no alien pass through our people no more. Now I'm going to get uh, a Cedrus in the book of the Apocrypha. So this is the Apocrypha, which is a segment of scriptures that the Bible Destruction Group, as well as the Roman Catholic Church, they tried to keep out of the Bible. But the Holy Spirit, our Father Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, had a way for this to get back in the right hands. This is the book of Second Cedrus. Chapter 6 and verse 54. And this is Ezra. This is Ezra speaking. And Ezra also has a book in the, in the Old Testament. Y'all bear with me. Right there. It says Ezra. That's that's who it's referring to when it says Asedris. So in the Apocrypha it says Asedris. But it's referring to Ezra. And the scriptures match up. You can read you can read both at the same time, and the scriptures will match up perfectly. Second Asedris. Salakia, second Ezras. Second Ezras. Chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord, Adam is Yahawashai. So Adam was made in the flesh. Uh, Adam was, was given a tunic of flesh because he, 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 he transgressed the law. He took some of the, the philosophies that were given to Eve. When it says that Eve partook in the fruit that the serpent gave her, that was talking about philosophies, beliefs. And Eve told some of those things to Adam. So in turn, Adam was punished. But Adam is our Lord Yahawashai. So Yahawashai was sent through Adam. He was sent through King Solomon. And then he came to be Yahawashai. And he died not only for his sins that he committed during the time of, of, of Adam, Isaac, and King Solomon. But also for the sins of Israel. So Adam is Yahawashai. Yahawashai is our Lord. Adam was the first man to be made, to be put on earth, Yahawashai is that first spirit that was ever created. And in turn, Yahawashai is going to be that last, that, that, that first, that Yahawashai is going to be the one who brings us up. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made it Lord, of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and thy people whom thou hast chosen. So we all come from Adam and the people and the people whom thou has chosen, the people who the Lord has chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou made it the world for our sakes. As for the other people which thou which which also come from Adam of Adam, thou hast made and said that they are nothing. But be like unto spittle. So these other nations, the Lord counts as spittle and has likened them and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Yahweh, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, as it reads in the book of Exodus, thy only begotten and thy fervent lover, 
are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So Ezra, Ezra was asking the Lord, look, these heathens are ruling over us. Lord, you don't even love them. You love us. So why are these heathens ruling over us? Lord, how long is this going to take place? That's what Ezra was, was asking. And notice in that scripture, it accounted them as spittle, which is also mentioned in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 15, all the way down to 17. And it called Israel the Lord's firstborn, which is also in the book of Ex Exodus. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 22. And then it mentioned uh, us being the Lord's only begotten. Well, the Lord is going to call us up into the adoption. He's going to adopt us again or call us into his presence, into his mercy. This is Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 3 and read down to verse 14. Blessed be Yahweh the Father, Yahweh and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us acceptable, accepted, and beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dis dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. So our, our Lord Yahweh Shai is that mediator in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works in all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And I'm going to get Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. I'll start at verse 14. It reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yahweh, these are the sons of Yahweh. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Yahweh. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Yahweh, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs with Yahweh Shahamashiach, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And I'll get Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So when our Lord Yahweh returns, he's going to call up his brethren. Being the elect of Israel. And I'll get Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of Yahweh that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to Yahweh which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable the perfect will of Yahweh. So our Lord calls for us not to be conformed to this world, but our mind to be transformed into the understanding of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And I'm going to get a few more scriptures. Few more scriptures. This is the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of Yahweh that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the, in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great power and Savior Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify him for himself his own special people zealous for good works speak these things exhort and rebuke with all authority let no one despise you so this is what we're waiting for And I'm looking for one more scripture. I got one on deck. I'm looking for one more. Yep, there we go. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace of that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time, of your stay here in fear so with this this is an arrest and that's in the book of micah chapter 2 and verse see i gotta get i gotta get a couple more micah chapter 2 and verse 9 shalakia micah chapter 2 and verse 10 
Arise and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is defiled. It shall destroy, yes, with utter destruction. So this isn't our resting place. This isn't our resting time. The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17. Brethren, join in following my example and take note of those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Hamashiach, whose end is destruction, whose power is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame who set their mind on earthly things. So Paul was saying, look, walk in the example that we set forth. Don't walk in the example of those other men who, who, who walk according to their own greed. So Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. And then I'm going to get 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. I'll start at verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of Yahweh. Therefore the world does not know us, because it does not know him. Beloved, now we are children of Yahweh, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when we, when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him, in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So you have the hope that the Lord is going to have mercy on you. And call you up into the chariots. Then you pure, purify yourself. From all the things that you used to be doing. And I'll end on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet.